Give the animal a reason to live. If you were kept in a little cage all your life, food just gets flung in, boring, sterile, miserable, that's no way to live, right? I really want these animals to thrive. And if we overpopulate our animals, or if we kind of get our animals into situations where they're just miserable, they're gonna get sick. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am, uh, well, I'm going into my least favorite room and I'm gonna be doing my least favorite thing. I'm gonna be a crotchety old man and I'm gonna be uh, whinging a little bit. And I say that with a smile because I am joking around. But uh, I just don't know. I gotta clean these snake cages and it's my least favorite thing in the world to do. I absolutely cannot stand keeping snakes. Snakes in vision cages. I just, oh man, it's just horrible to me. It is the worst. So uh, we are down to three snakes at the camp. Oh, by the way, we also put a, one of the tortoises in here because it was freezing last night and uh, everybody's good. There's some baby rhinos. But yeah, I gotta, I gotta clean these out. And um, I know I'm a whinger and I complain. And uh, you know what? Hey, it's my right. I'm gonna whinge. Least favorite way to keep snakes. Um, we gotta pull them out. We gotta uh, go ahead and make sure everyone is kept healthy. Let's see, here's my uh, containment bucket right there. So we gotta get the blackhead out, as you can see. Oh, he just shed, which is nice. That's probably why he was making a big mess out of everything. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get the snakes out. We're gonna hang out, we're gonna, um, clean them, we gotta go clean Buttercup's cage, um, change the waters, stuff like that. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of actually keeping snakes, to be perfectly honest. I love snakes, but um, as far as a pet in this situation, I'm just not into it. Um, I don't know, how do you guys keep your snakes? Some of you guys love this stuff. Um, some people who love snakes just love cleaning the enclosures all the time, me, not a fan. Um, I like to see them in a more natural enclosure. The reason they're in this is because it is winter and so it's just a pain in the neck for me to be pulling them out. Every time it gets cold, I just leave them in here for a few months. Once that the uh, winter's over though, uh, they're no big deal because I get to keep them outdoors. Um, I don't have to clean uh, the enclosures uh, the same way because we're having a bioactive uh, situation, right? But uh, anyway, as I yap, let's get to it. I'm gonna pull off the um, glass right here. And after the blackhead sheds, it's always hungry, to be perfectly honest. So I'm just gonna start pulling out a few things, um, like the water and the newspaper. Yucky. Oh my gosh, yeah, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Do, are some of you in agreement? Do you guys like keeping snakes? You gotta let me know. And here is the snake. She, she's, man, this snake is really torn up. Their, their enclosure, oh my gosh, let's see. Let's see what kind of mood it's in. Uh, usually if you just, whoop. <laughs> usually if you just reach in and grab, it knows you are not in fact going to be oh, nice and warm on that heat tape, so that's good. What a beautiful snake though the blackhead is. What a beautiful snake. Look how big it's gotten. How cool, huh? It is a cool snake, you know, now that I get it out. Gorgeous snake. But i um, probably going to be trading it to a friend of mine for some turtles. Um, it's just what I'm into, you know? I like keeping certain snakes, but I just, I don't know. For me, it sounds silly, right? But for me, the snakes are a lot of work. And I know that flies in the face of what most people think of when they think of keeping snakes. Oh, they're so easy. It's no big deal. Let's see if I can get the snake to come down or at least grab you guys here and get this little booger inside this. Oh, she does. Of course, he doesn't want to go into the container, but he's got to go in the container because I need to get some work done. Okay. This lid, unfortunately, is broken. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna start cleaning these guys, then we gotta go over and we gotta clean our girl, 
Buttercup, who is also in Shed. So good times are coming. Honestly, that wasn't so bad. But you know, I, it's just the fact that I dislike keeping snakes in such a basic, boring way. Um, you know, if I could get some more outdoor enclosures for them, that'd be good. Or maybe I need to build some outdoor enclosures with some heated hides. I think that would save me a lot of time. Uh, and I just don't feel so guilty about keeping them in these cages. I just think they're boring. So that's just the way I am. I don't know, you guys might disagree, but let me know in the comments below. Do some of you feel the same way? I know there's a lot of snake keepers out there. They love snakes and that's fantastic. I want you to love snakes. I love them, but just keeping them in this fashion just bores me. Um, I'm more of a guy who loves to go out and look for snakes. Now here's Colin, we haven't seen him in a while. There he is, he's an old snake, but he's doing good and he's about to shed as well. So let's go ahead and get him in here. He's looking a little kind of uh, drab, not as vibrant as he normally looks because he is about to shed. But he's got water, he's got security, and he's got warmth. So I like to use these little rods as a way to keep him from pushing open his cage. All right, so we did it, we've done that. Now let's head on out and let's go see an enclosure that I actually do enjoy, uh, and that is Princess Buttercup. Now, Princess Buttercup, as you'll see, is also gonna be shedding here real soon. Um, so yeah, she's up there doing her thing. We gotta get in here. I need to rake out some of her, uh, some of her poopies, uh, if you would imagine. As you can imagine, there's a lot of it. So we're gonna go clean that out. Let me just plug this in so we have some light. There she is, the buttercup. So I just wanna take a look and see how she's doing. We got the three latches. She's gotta be kept inside as per the, the rules here. There she is. Oh, she's got ticks too. We gotta to pull some ticks off of her. Oh man, what a pain in the neck. See, this is an indoor enclosure. Uh, you can see some urates here that I'll scrape up. Um, there's some feces right there that I want to get out. You know, she hasn't used this. I'd like her to use this, um, but maybe because she shut this door. I got to keep that open. All right, so we're going to pull some ticks off the old gal first. Lovely. Let's hope she's in a good mood. Let's check. Now, of course, she's going to be in her shedding mode. Not the best time to be touching a serpent, especially a 13 foot python, uh, Burmese python that is. You can see her eyes are opaque. She's, she's definitely, oh, you're not mad at me, are you baby? Let me just check guys. I'm gonna do this hands free. I'm just checking her out. Hey Angel, I know I did see a tick on her. I got one on her face. And I do have to get, there it is. There's the big tick, guys, see it? There's a tick on her face, and then there's a tick just on the other side of her, so. Easy does it, sweetheart, easy does it. Don't be mad at me. Don't bite me. Oh, I have to be careful. Okay, we got one tick off of her. Look at this fat little blood sucker. We're gonna get rid of it. I just smash them. Now I gotta get that tick that's on her little pretty face. Come here, sweetheart. See this, guys? We don't want her to bite. We don't want her to bite, and snakes definitely don't like being touched by the head. But we did it! That's it, two ticks. It happens. Ah, I just squish them. There you go. All right, now, 
I just want to make sure, come on, relax now. Just make sure there's no others on her. She looks pretty clean. Beautiful snake, she's laying here. And uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up around here. You guys just hang out and uh, let's get this show on the road, shall we? Just let some water overflow. I sprayed everything down. Is it weird that I prefer to clean this enclosure rather than those little enclosures? I don't know. I just feel like it's easier for me to rake up the poop, to spray everything down. Um, I feel like the snake has much more room, obviously. Um, she's a big girl. I like to mist her down because she is shedding. And it does get drier here in Florida during this time of year. So sheds can sometimes be a little bit more difficult for the large pythons. So I go ahead and I mist her down, keep the humidity up. Uh, she's got the large tub that I wanna circulate some warm well water in. Um, we do have a heater, it is insulated in here. There's a radiator. So when I came in here, it was about 75 degrees. Uh, last night was about 49 degrees. Uh, she's cool to the touch, but these basking lights just came on when I started to clean in here. Uh, Buttercup's awesome, man. I do, in fact, love this snake. Um, the fact that I have such a large enclosure for her, since I built this, this has just made my life so much easier. And it goes back to what I said about the other snakes. If I can keep them outside in larger enclosures, those larger enclosures are easier for me to handle, believe it or not. They're easier for me to clean. Um, you know, it, it's just, it just is aesthetically nicer. I'm just not a fan of keeping snakes in these boring, mundane enclosures, man. They need to move around. Um, I am recently started to read a book called The Secret Social Lives of, of Reptiles, um, and it's, it's just so interesting. It's everything that I kind of intuitively just knew um, if you keep these animals, they just give her a squeeze. Um, if you keep these animals, you know that they, they do possess uh, feelings. They, they do get happy. They do um, have uh, joy in living. And one of the best things that was ever told to me was from uh, not too long ago from Tom Crutchfield, a friend of mine who's got just close to 50, maybe almost 60 years experience with reptiles. Um, we had Jerry, my buddy Jerry had that black dragon who we've tried everything, it wasn't eating, it was sick, we've done everything we could do, we nursed it back to health. Um, I had talked to Dr. Mike Gillen and he was telling me, we've done everything so now it's time for benign neglect. Like hey, if you keep working on an animal, that animal is gonna get so stressed out just from being worked on, it'll probably kill him. But I talked to Tom Crutchfield, like hey, what can we do to make this animal you know, survive and help it. He goes, Kenneth, give the animal a reason to live. And it's so simple now that I think of it. We had it in a very small enclosure because we thought, hey, it needs to be isolated. Uh, I don't want, I want to restrict its movement. Um, but you know what? The animal's spirit almost was just kind of beaten. And um, Jerry and I moved it to one of Jerry's larger enclosures. We put it outside. We said, hey, we've done everything we can for this animal. Let's get it outside. Let's give it what it needs. And guess what happened? That animal turned right around. We gave it a reason to live. It had to want to live. If you were kept in a little cage all your life, food just gets flung in, boring, sterile, miserable, that's no way to live, right? So that's why for me, I have such a hard time and I, you know, with the snakes in those type of enclosures. They're serving a purpose, but as soon as I can, I want to get those snakes back into an outdoor enclosure. And that's why I, you know, make, some people might think that I do things and it's overkill. The fact that Slinky has such a large enclosure just for one lizard or, you know, all my tortoises have large enclosures. 
it's because I really want these animals to thrive. And if we overpopulate our animals or if we kind of get our animals into situations where they're just miserable, um, they're going to get sick. Same thing happens to people, to any animal that's overcrowded or its spirit is broken. They get sick. Oh, we got a little, we got a little drainage going on here. Hold on. Look at this. More poop for me to clean, guys. She pooped in a water. Lovely. Oh, oh, oh God, this is gross. I gotta, I gotta drain this. Ah, I'm touching the poops. I'm touching the poops. Let's drain it and we'll fill it up. That'll go down the drain. Those turds. Send those turds down the drain, shall we? Anyway, I was onto something I, I thought was kind of profound when I was stopped by that squelching noise. But anyway, guys, that's what I'm all about. I like to keep these animals in a uh, situation where I know they're gonna be happy and healthy. Um, that's why I, I began this video kind of griping at the way the snakes were kept. And I only have two. And I just see, when I see, you know, uh, in my first time coming down and living down here in Florida, I saw a lot of snake breeders and you just see rack upon rack upon rack. It's just not the way those animals are meant to live. And I might catch hell for that, um, but it's, it's just not the way. Um, these animals explore, they use their reptilian brains, they're not dumb, solitary animals. We're finding this out. And I like to think that, you know, myself, Tom Crutchfield, who's, you know, used to do it a certain way, but has totally changed his whole approach to keeping snakes and lizards, um, you know, it's about less is more, right? Let's give these animals larger enclosures where they can move, we can watch the, a whole variety of their behaviors and thus enjoy them more and then they enjoy lives in captivity much better. Uh, anyway, that's my little, my little griping today. I hope you enjoyed it. It's just a little, a little that's on my mind. And you know what, now that I spent time with these beautiful animals, it's been a little while since we did anything with my snakes. Um, don't worry, I won't be uh, falling out of love with snakes. And I'm hoping that my buttercup here, this beautiful angel, will stay with me for quite so many years, man, because I fought hard to get her back. Um, and uh, man, it also, she also makes me think of my buddy Fred, because Fred was the guy who stepped up when I didn't have the permit, when my permit lapsed. And uh, eternally grateful that I didn't have to surrender this beautiful snake and that she's now living here with me again. So thanks, Fred. I love you, buddy. You're the best. We're going to miss Fred every day of our lives. But um, anyway, good times with the snakes. I'm going to go ahead and fill up the rest of that water and just enjoy my beautiful python here. Thanks so much, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, man. What do you think about keeping snakes? Do you want to keep them in more naturalistic enclosures or do you prefer the basic setups? Hide water newspaper. Let me know. I want to know what's going on out there. Um, you know, nothing against snake keepers. Um, it's just not the way I want to do it. I want to replicate nature as best I can and give these animals the space they deserve. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on another Camp Kennan video. Bye.